were successful in a row uh, at Tennessee, um, and then also uh, went and played at Arkansas as well. Um, just simply didn't give ourselves a chance to win that ball game by our performance in the first half. Um, I thought defensively we did a pretty good job with Arkansas. That's the lowest amount of points they scored on the home court this whole season. But uh, we kind of fueled their fast break by having 14 turnovers in the first half and only one assist. So I thought we kind of, the pressure got to us and we started to make individual plays and started playing like a team. And I don't think that's from selfishness. It's just the way that Arkansas plays. They try to make you make individual plays and speed you up. So um, we got to put that behind us and get ready for a good Alabama team. We'll be in the uh, confines of the hump. And um, I just told our guys we got to get uh, mentally and physically ready to go out and compete and beat uh, Alabama. Have you seen your guys kind of respond since that Arkansas loss in a, in a positive way? Well, I, what we did was uh, our guys on Sunday, we just had them get ice baths for recovery and we simply watched tape a little bit of some things that we did wrong against Arkansas offensively, and then we just uh, walked through. So um, we didn't physically do anything on the court, so this will be the first time we'll do something on Monday. And we're going to be very short, uh, very light. We're going to go real hard. We're only going to go about an hour. Um, I just thought our guys were a little fatigued um, when we played Arkansas, and I thought we practiced a little bit too late. We didn't get done with practice at Arkansas until about 8 p.m., and then that short turnaround to play at 3 o'clock. So I just want to make sure we give our guys a chance to be fully prepared for Alabama by shortening some things. What did you kind of say to them at halftime of that game? It seems like, I mean, obviously that's a big hole you got in, but, you know, in, in previous years, that's something that would have carried over to the second half. But you guys seem to kind of put it by, behind them pretty quick. Is that, that's something that, that comes easier with this group now? It's, it's not focusing on what, what just happened? Well, I told our guys before the game, um, I said, it's, it's real simple. I said, do you, be you. Um, and I think what happens is when you play against Arkansas, because of their frantic pace, they speed you up on the offensive end and get you to do things out of your characteristics. So really have guys out there doing some things that they're not capable of doing that fast. Um, so we just said, hey, we got to calm down, we got to slow down, because defensively we're pretty good at this point in time, but we're not giving ourselves a chance to be good on the defensive end because we're turning the ball over too much. So we just had to calm some guys down and get them to play basketball. And it's like, that's probably the most hostile environment, the best environment in the SEC. And, you know, I.J. Reddy being there playing at home in front of the fans and things like that, he probably got a little wrapped up in that as well, too. So we just all need to kind of take a deep breath and calm down. Is it good to get the team back on the court this soon after a loss like that to try to get, you know, kind of put it behind them? Oh, that depends on how you play Tuesday night. <laughs> I'll, be able to, I'll be able to answer that once our performance is done Tuesday night. But I, I would think so. You know, you want to get a sour taste out of your mouth and get on the court as quickly as possible. But sometimes it's all about who you're prepping for. You know, Alabama can be a difficult preparation because they do some run and jump. They play some zone. They play some man. You have to switch some on the ball string action. So, you would probably have to like like to have two days of going through them in order to get ready for Alabama. But as far as like our psyche, it's probably the best thing to get on the court and start playing right away. What do you, what do you need to see from the team tonight or today? I guess to, to show that they're that they're bouncing back and not letting them off very well. Well, our guys have been pretty resilient and really carried a pretty good attitude. I mean, um, every time you come to our practice, and I've had outside guys that I've been in the coaching business with come and watch our practices. And they said you wouldn't be able to tell you know, your record or that you all had a bad loss by the way you guys are practicing. So I, I do give our guys credit for pretty much you know, putting on a hard hat and practicing every day. So I, I don't think it would be much different than what we have seen because I'll be honest with you, our guys have been really good about their practice habits. You talked about dealing with success. How does dealing with a loss, bouncing back after a loss, kind of factor into that? Well, I think it's all about maturity. Uh, I think it's uh, being able to see, be critical of yourselves and critical of your performance without them thinking I'm actually like now down on them or mad at them. It's just about like critiquing and taking that criticism and moving on. So, you know, it's just two different situations. What really concerns you when you watch Randolph on film? Well, he's really good. Um, I, I always thought that Levi Randolph was a guy that could do more for Alabama, but was such a team guy, he kind of deferred to other people on the court at that point in time. 
but I always really liked his game. I liked his unselfishness. I think he's a big, strong wing. I think he can shoot it. I think he can pass it. I think he can handle it. I think he's obviously he's a really bright kid, and that carries over in the classroom. You can see it on the court. So I just like the way he carries himself and his whole demeanor. He's got some leadership skills. Um, but the thing I think that's most, you know, most difficult about him is that he's got all that skill level, but he's got an athlete's body too. Usually you don't have both. Usually you have a guy that's like really got a big time athletic body, but he's not as skilled. Or the guy's really skilled, but he's now got a big time athletic body. I think Levi has both. How is Travis uh, going into this morning night's game? Well, he's still, um, I don't know if he's 100% yet, um, but uh, he, he got that shot. Um, and that seemed to help him. It usually takes about two to three days before you're up and going again after that shot. So we didn't do anything Sunday, so it'll be interesting to see how he bounced back today. Um, but uh, from my understanding, it still take a few days for him to be totally 100%. Um, but uh, he's got to be better than what he was. That's why he went and got the shot. This is uh, specifically about Gavin. Just as a generality, if you've been around before, guys who play for their hometown college, what kind of impact, I guess, does that have? Well, what's that like for a guy to play in his hometown? Well, I think one thing it adds right away is it adds the fact that he cares. You know, a lot of people that end up, like, coming to Mississippi State, they don't have the history and the knowledge and the background about, like, Mississippi State University and the athletics. So a guy comes in with that previous knowledge, and they just care about, like, rivalries. They care about when we play LSU because they sit there and they experience it before. They care about when we play in Alabama or in Ole Miss. So I just think those guys come in with a bit of knowledge about it, and now they know, like, hey, this game is important because I remember when I was nine years old and we played LSU or we played Ole Miss in the, in the crowd and the environment and things like that. So I just think when you have guys that are familiar with your program and familiar with your history, games mean more to them. Uh, is that, yeah. uh, do you think there's any more pressure just because you know that every game, whether it's mom, dad, grandma, guy you're in school with, whatever it is, they're all watching? And it's the team that they cheer for anyway. Yeah, I, I tell you what, that's a, that's a hard question to answer because to me, um, they've been watching you play in high school. They've been watching you play in junior high school. Um, so you would think you'd be a little bit more comfortable with the fact that they're you know going to get a chance to watch you every game in college too. So. Um, how you perform, I think that's every individual person. But like to me, I would think you'd be a little bit more comfortable with the situation. How much concern is it with the quick turnaround, with, with Chicken being healthy and being ready to go? Not healthy, but you know what I mean. Yeah, the, with the fact that we really didn't do anything at all yesterday, okay. I, I think that helps him and the fact that we're going to keep it short. But, you know, once again, Mike, we have no idea. I mean, he could walk in today and slept on his back room and doesn't feel good and doesn't practice today. Or we could go through the shoot around tomorrow and he comes down on his back room and he's not able to play. You know, it's just a, a, a game to game, hour to hour, day to day situation with him on that back. So until he comes into the training room and, and meets with Ryan and they go through their exercises and their rehab, then he'll tell me, like, a chick looks good today, good to go practice. Or even like, hey, I'd limit him today or he's full board. It's just like, wait till I get that report. So I wish I had a more decisive answer for you, but that's just the way it is at this point in time. Has he been kind of a difference as of late with the team playing a little better? Is there something else that you've seen? Well, I think the one thing that he has more confidence that he can actually do some of the things that he used to do. I think he came into this wanting to do all those things that he did to make those athletic plays, but it just wasn't there. And now the fact that it's there, he feels more confident. He can go out and make some of those athletic plays that he was making in the past. To me, it's almost like a guy coming back from an ACL injury. Okay. You know, like, hey, he's 100%, but he's still not sure he can put his foot in there and plant and do some cutting and things like that until they actually go out there and do it, and now they have the confidence that they can do it. Then they start playing and get back to them old selves. You know, everybody always says, like, when you come back from ACL, it's not the first year <coughs> that you're back. It's really that second year that you're back. So. Maybe it's a situation where him going through so many games, now he's starting to feel a little bit better by himself. Not that, you know, excluding the last game, what, what do you think has been the reason for his improved shooting? Has it simply been getting the gym more? I mean, has it been that simple or changed anything with his approach? Well, we took advantage of the fact that he had the back surgery. He really couldn't do anything. 
And so what we did with him the whole time was we did a whole bunch of just stationary ball handling. He's sitting in a chair and just handling basketball. And then we did a whole bunch of things where he just sitting in a chair and do a lot of form shooting, you know, just trying to make sure we break down a shot and make it better. And I think what he's doing now is because of that fact, he never got much arc on the shot because he always finished below his eyes. But now we got him getting a little bit more arc on the shot, and I think that's transferred over a little bit. But, you know, you always want to take a negative and make it into a positive. The negative is obviously he was out with the back surgery, but the positive was we got a chance to do a lot of form shooting with him during that time. As a coach, if you do kind of look at the bigger picture, how much pressure or how much thought do you put into the sense that you and Alabama are both four and six and kind of SEC standings going to the SEC tournament? You know, this, that, I know this may sound bad, Michael. I have no idea what our conference record is. I had no idea what Alabama's conference record was until you said that. So, you know, to me, you know, and I'm so bad about this, I'm a, I'm a game to game guy. So, like, I'm just worried about the next preparation and things like that. The assistants may be aware of it, the fans may be aware of it, but I really didn't have any idea of Alabama's record until you said it. So, I guess that answers your question. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs>